Cheers. Welcome to Aimless Discussions. We ask each other fucked up questions while getting shit faced. It's going to be a lot of fun because it's already been fun on the road to getting drunk for you guys. So yeah, we pre gamed a little bit just so we'd loosen up a little. Nah. But we're both pretty sober right now, and you're going to watch that change. Nah. I mean, I'm pretty loose. <laughs> the, the wheels have been loosened for me for well, sure. You brought your beverage outside, whereas I did not. Nah. Yeah. You got to learn to keep it going. Indeed. So, now we got to start this shit. I don't know, man. <laughs> super fucking exciting. <laughs> um, all right, we can rock paper scissors, and then the first person will ask the question. Okay. All right, rock paper scissors. Uh, I do say shoot. What the fuck? Yeah, I meet a lot of people who don't do say shoot, but I do say shoot. All right. And do you just want to do one, two, three? Let's rock paper scissors for how we should rock paper scissors. <laughs> right. rock, rock paper, paper scissors, scissors say shoot. shoot. See, I, I'm, it's a fuck, I can't do it. You can't do it? Right. Rock, paper, scissors, say. Oh, okay, oh, sorry. We'll do I one, two, three. I said I can't do it. All right, we'll do one, two, three. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, no. Are we doing best two out of three? I feel like that's fair. Oh, my God. This is, is this entertaining, guys? This is going to be in it. They want to see it. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, I did say shoot. All right. <laughs> Alright, this next one will be a tiebreaker Because I did rock anyway So I would have won that one This next one, that's it We'll do one, two, three Alright All right. One, two, three Alright, so I'm a question guy Yep Alright Who did you lose your virginity to? Her name was Leslie I know She'd been like In my school since like Sixth grade And I kind of knew her And then like we became friends and we became better friends like in 11th grade and she always had a boyfriend and I wasn't really into her specifically but then like one day I got confused and thought she liked me and that made me like her but then like I really liked her and she's the girl who I mentioned in the Chucky episode like I tried to make a move on oh right right disaster and then like but you got in that hole yeah because like months later we were like good friends and hanging out all the time and I had shaved my beard. I shaved my mustache and I shaved my beard and I just had this poof here and I used to have a shaved head back then and she just started looking at me different and I didn't know it but for like several weeks she was like laying down hints and shit. And Fuck yeah. Finally got in there. Damn. Good job. Yeah. Good job. And then yeah that was a hard one. She was like the only girl I've ever like Still had a thing for for like years after we broke up. Like that was a hard one for me. Now it's like a few months and I don't give a shit anymore. But yeah, I was probably 28 or something by the time I fucking actually could like look at her and not give a shit. Nice. Yeah, that's rough, man. I've definitely, I have that one girl that's just like, Ugh, if I think about it a little bit too hard, I'm gonna fuck myself up. So let me just keep on thinking other shit. Oh. All right, well, that was my story, so I'm going to take a drink. Good job. Oh, anything you want to share about your virginity loss before we do a different question? Uh, when, when I lost my virginity, number one, I lost it to a bigger woman. Like, <laughs> significantly bigger. <laughs> Dude, she was so <laughs> operating heavy machinery in your teen years. Oh, it's, damn. Yeah, uh, it's rough. And then I kept banging her because she was the only person that would let me fuck her and shit. But, like, I, I didn't tell my friends for a long time that I was fucking that her. old moped joke. Uh, it, it was rough. It was rough. But uh, her life is garbage now. <laughs> <laughs> it really fucking is. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have you ever shit in public? <sighs> so, yes. <laughs> I have shit in public. It was back when I lived in New York. And, uh... You know, the New York City subway system is a disgusting place, <laughs> and I did not make it any better. But there was one time that I was, uh, anyone who knows New York knows that there's a fucking significant change from going into Manhattan to the Bronx. And I grew up in the Bronx, and I was in Manhattan, so I was at 125th, like that breaker area, and I just, I had the shit so fucking bad, so fucking bad. So, uh... I went down the little stairs on the edge of the subway, and I just uh, fucking shit right on the train tracks. And uh, there was no paper. 
<laughs> available. So I just had to uh, put my pants back on and just take that ride up from 125th all the way up to 183rd with just like shit butt. And uh, that's me. <laughs> I got two shitting stories. Like, they're good, so I have to share them both. Let's hear them. All right. So when I was around when I was 17, senior year of high school, we used to go over to the local elementary school and get high on the roof. And it was like three or four blocks from my house. But one time we got down off the roof and we're fucking around on the blacktop and I had to go so bad. And I was, it was like, there's no way I'm making it fucking home. <laughs> so <laughs> desperate. Like I go over by the water fountain, the same water fountain I drank from when I was a fucking fifth grader. <laughs> and I leaned up against the, cause they were California. So we have outdoor water fountains and shit. Leaned up against the wall on the blacktop, pulled my fucking pants down, and like kind of half sat, like using the wall to brace myself, and just unholy unleashed a giant pile of human shit <laughs> right next to the children's water fountain. And I remember wiping my ass with my socks and then just leaving the socks on top of the pile of shit. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Like, I like to think the custodian found it and not some fucking wayward kid. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'll never know until like. Somehow they use this against me, but yeah. And then, All right. hang on, before you get okay. into your second one, I so mine isn't. I have another shit story, but it's not a public one. I had to do it in my house. <laughs> so I used to live in this fucking like an outhouse, basically. I didn't have a kitchen. I didn't have a bathroom. I had to go into the main house to do anything that that important. There was one time that I really, really had to fucking shit and just. It, the person who was in the bathroom took like a fucking hour and a half and I could not fucking deal with it. So I had to like shit into a plastic bag in the confines of my own house and it smelled <laughs> so fucking bad, man. Like I remember like shitting in a bag, which number one, you feel like trash. <laughs> you don't feel good about yourself shitting into a fucking plastic bag in your house, like on the couch and shit. It was terrible. And uh, number two, you're you're like gagging from like the strong scent of shit in your house. So there's another one for mine to break up your two. That's fucking brutal, dude. Oh, man. Terrible. Okay. This one happened like two or three months ago. Okay. All right. I got, I got a good streak. I haven't had to do it since I was like 17. <laughs> I'm out fucking Pokemon hunting. It's Pokemon Community <laughs> Day. And if you know anything about Pokemon Community Day, you have three hours and then you're getting these rare fuckers but you, for three hours straight. And I have to go to the bathroom and I'm pushing the limits because I'm out there. I'm trying to get the fucking Pokemon before I go home. And I'm over at the Humane Society. By my, and then that's when I'm like, I have to fucking go. Like, I have to fucking I have no choice. So I drive out of the Humane Society. And I'm driving by this dog park where there's two fenced-in areas. One is a normal dog park, <laughs> and the other one is like some kind of special public dog, or not public, but private dog park that's mm -hmm. like only open for certain things. Anyway, I don't even like to shit. Like I have like a list of places I'll shit, like at Barnes and Noble and Target. Like, <laughs> Target keeps their bathrooms. Fucking, you guys shit. You shit at Target. You guys do you know? good. You good. What was your other one? Barnes and Noble. They're not Dude, as that's clean, not but bad. it's a nice. They got a nice handicap. You feel good shitting in a Barnes and Noble. Yeah, you feel good just walking into a Barnes and Noble. So like <laughs> shitting in there, I bet is like I'm a little classy. Yeah, it's yeah. just somewhere I'm comfortable shitting. Um, but I'm like, as I'm driving out past the dog park, I'm like, I can't fucking. There's no way I can make it. And I look, and there's a fucking big blue porta potty. This is my fucking, <laughs> this is my oasis in the desert, dude. I'm like, I'm fucking going to this goddamn porta potty. Fuck it. I, don't it. Care. I hate porta potties. Yeah. Just shit. Like, it's not the even, opposite of shitting it's in a bar. It's a noble. Even in water. It's just above the water. It's so oh. gross. It always smells fucking garbage. Oh. It's fucking combined. It's and terrible. Oh. Yeah. It's, That's why I don't even like go to festivals, dude. When you fly on an airplane and you have to shit on a fucking, it's just the more sophisticated version of a fucking porter body. At least that can thing. suck the fuck away. Okay, so I park and I get out of the car, I'm just squeezing cheeks, like fucking <laughs> walking fucked up. Like, and I get to the gate, it's the private dog park, and I get to the gate, it's fucking locked. And I was like, it's too late, dude. The groundhog has seen his shadow, dude. Right, right, it's fucker. coming. And so I just 
pulled my pants over my ass cheeks, still covering my dick, and squat down. <laughs> and there are humans at the other dog park, fucking <laughs> less than a hundred yards away. And like, there's just people. There's traffic going by. And I'm just I'm hoping they're not fucking seeing, and I just <laughs> squirt out this lava, this, fucking, <laughs> this goddamn pudding fucking spill. I just shit on the goddamn ground, and luckily none splashes on my feet. I pull up my pants and fucking drive home in shame with mud butt. Uh, and, you know, my pants had to get changed. It was fucking horrific. Garbage, man. But, like, it was happening, dude. The fucking Somebody fucking turned the crank, and the fucking flow was coming. <laughs> It's like, I, what if I was in a Sears? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, it's, it's dangerous. God, it's rough. I'm glad you made it through to the other side. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Like, as the older I get, the more shit incidents I have. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I hear that. Like, as you get older, you, like, shit yourself way more. It's just, like, happens. Yeah, I, like, coughed and fucking, like, uh, had, like, a fucking breach. Dude, a buddy of mine, she's, she's just having it hard. Like, she just randomly will shit herself a little bit. Maybe, some, maybe she's got IBS, dude. Nah, maybe. Crohn's. That sucks. I dated a girl with IBS. Yeah? Yeah. Not to, uh, you know, not to diminish your struggle, people who watch our show with IBS, but it's annoying for our us. Show, <laughs> our show is awesome on the toilet. Uh, I hope you're enjoying yeah. it as you shit. All right. Next question. When was the first time that you, like, hit somebody with, like, meaning? I have never punched another human being in the face. Never? No. Wow. But in lieu of that, I have a decent fight story. Let's hear it. All right. So, sixth grade, I'm one of the good kids with a decent fucking grade in PE. So for the last two weeks, we're allowed to go to the pool. It was the last week. Great setting. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to walk across the fucking field that you run laps, and you can go to the public pool that's back there. And I'm going, but I'm not going to swim because I'm a fat kid. But I've got my, I've got a pad open and I'm drawing. And I just drew all the time back then. I wish I still felt that way. Like, and I'm walking, and this fucking kid Udon, this fucking um, kid that's been tormenting me like since like fifth grade. Like, he wasn't really a bully because I, I would just talk shit back to him. You know what I mean? But he was just a fucking pest. Like, you know, he was calling me Fat Brad. Like, like that, <laughs> that was a, like that was a fucking brilliant rhyme or something. Like, it's fucking it don't rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> Fat Brad, like Fat Brad, like he's he was Laotian. We had a lot of Laotian kids, and most of them were cool. They came in the eighties over on what I presume to be a door or a banana boat, or <laughs> and they're they're cool kids. But Udon was always a fucking asshole. And this fucking prick walked up to me, and like so, like I, I think it was fourth and fifth grade that he like was a prick to me, and this was sixth. And he came up and he grabbed my pencil out of my hand and broke it in half and said something fat boy or some shit dick and i just seized him by the throat <laughs> like fucking undertaker and squeezed it and i just pushed him onto the dirt field and he scraped his leg all over yeah. and he was like oh and he got up and he started yeah. fucking hopping away and he fucking was gone yeah, and i wish to christ i'd left it like that because the next year in seventh grade I was talking shit, and I was telling somebody the story, and they told him. Oh, so, no! So he wanted to have a fucking rematch, and I was just overconfident, and he fucking socked me in the ear. Oh, God. And it rang for, like, two days straight. I, <laughs> I had to, like, back out of the fucking fight immediately. because he so Well, anyway, fuck you, Don. Who punched uh, somebody in the ear? Yeah, fuck this guy. You little bitch. Yeah, uh, fuck Round three. <laughs> Let's go. Round fucking three. <laughs> So what you good. got? Fuck, so I had the complete opposite experience of you. Like, growing up in New York, like, you're getting jumped. There's constantly people who are getting in your face. It's a fucking testing ground as a kid. So I got into a lot of fights growing up. Like, I'm very scared. If you look at my hands, they're just fucking... They're scarred up just because fighting all the time. But my very first fight was... Uh, you needed it. You needed it. There was this kid who... His name was fucking Joshua. This guy was a fucking prick all the fucking time. Always a dick to me. Specifically because we attended the same after school program together. And it was he just always would make a fucking big deal. Like, I've never been a sports guy. I've always been a fucking spectator. And, like, whenever, like, I would get picked to be on his team, he would do, like, real dramatic shit. And there was one time that it came to a fucking head where I got picked on his team or whatever. And he made a big fuss of it. He made everyone laugh at me because he goes, Oh, now we're going to lose! <laughs> which like in hindsight is fucking hysterical 
But uh, it rubbed me the real wrong way. The real wrong way. So I was kind of like a fucking misbehavior kid. Like I never got to go on any of the field trips or anything. When everyone else would go on a trip, they would put me in the special ed class. So like I would go and hang out with like I got close to like the special ed kids and shit. So one day they're asking like why I didn't go on the trip and shit. And I was like, well, you know, I fucking I did this bad thing or whatever. I don't want to go to after school because fucking Joshua is going to be a dick to me. And they're like, well, we should go fuck him up then. <laughs> And like, <laughs> and like me as a little kid, I'm like, yeah, we should. <laughs> like, we should totally fuck this guy up. He's a problem in my life. <laughs> it would be awesome if we could just settle this shit real quick. So one day, <laughs> we're waiting for him. It's me and like five other special ed kids. And we wait for him to fucking cross the street. So I see him and I'm like, yo, Joshua, come over here. And he comes over and like, I just feel that like pressure <laughs> of like, they're like, yo, all you have to do is hit him. So that way you take the fault for the fight, but then we'll come in and we'll just like wreck this fucking guy. So like I'm talking to him and I'm like building him up and like I just felt that thing inside of me where like you're you're ready and I punched him in the face and as soon as like my blow hit his face, I got pushed out <laughs> of the interaction because then just everybody else like beat the shit out of Joshua. Holy fuck. Yeah, and now... Even to this day, if I'm ever in the Bronx and I still see Joshua, I know this motherfucker. If I still see this guy, he will cross the street. That's amazing. It is amazing. I notice. I, I notice that story. And I notice that your fucking buddy Izzy, who used to be my friend, now isn't both of our friends because you're a bitch and probably couldn't deal. But you did it to yourself, motherfucker. Yeah, super relatable fucking segue. Yeah, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you go through a stealing phase? And if so, what did you steal and how did it end? Oof, I went through a deep stealing phase. I'm very good at stealing. <laughs> if I fucking need to, oh my god, I'm fucking great. And uh, I, the height of my stealing was when I had my first kid. Because I was like 18 when I had my first son. Uh -huh. So I just fucking, I didn't have shit <laughs> in my life. So I quickly learned how to, like, steal diapers and fucking diaper cream and fucking everything that you can need for babies. Like, clothes at Target and shit. I would go to the bathroom and, like, fucking rip tags off and shit. I, I became very, very good at stealing. So, yes, I, I did have a very good, <laughs> thick stealing phase. Right to that, son. Yeah. But I don't steal anymore just because it makes me feel like a loser. Like, it's not even so much about, like, the law catching me or being in there embarrassed for being caught stealing. It just feels now like if you have to steal, you're fucking up in other areas of right. life. So, okay. Um, I went through a brief one after high school. I would uh, remember going to uh, Target and shoving DVDs for, I think it was Boogie Nights and The Exorcist. I can't remember. I've never put two, two Blu rays down my pants and. We have a garden center, an outdoor garden center at every Target, so I would exit through there. And I did that, and I also stole Vampire the Masquerade on fucking computer, but, like, joke's on me because my video card couldn't handle it. <laughs> um, and then the, when I stopped was because I was dating this fucking awful girl named Zila, and I st was trying to steal a Sublime CD for her, and my friend Robert was, we were at Tower Records, and I would, I had put the Sublime CD in my pants, and he was taking some shit. And, like, we were totally being clocked by the security, even to the point where, like, they tr basically tried to warn us. One of the security guards, like, picked up one of the fucking, like, alarm things that we peeled off and, like, looked at it and, like, threw it on top of the thing. <laughs> and I just thought it was another customer who just found it and, like, whatever. And, uh, we just walked out, and we got fucking busted right there, and we had to go to fucking class together and, like... Those classes are really weird, too, because they basically tell you how to steal well. <laughs> you know, they tell you about all the mistakes people make and stuff. Yeah. But really, they were just instructing it. But that was enough for me, like, getting fucking in trouble. But if there's no... I would never steal from another human that I knew. But yeah. there's no part of me that, like, is, like, thinking, like, oh, it's so bad that I don't want to do it. Because yesterday I was in fucking FYE and the son of a bitch was taking so long and the week before I had a big issue because I was supposed to buy one, get one fucking steel books because like the sale was yesterday but the sign was still up. And I was pissed. 
And I was in there, and fucking he was, like, taking way too long with a dude, and we were in line for so long, and I ended up putting my shit back. But I remember thinking, like, if I could walk out of here with five fucking steelbooks, I would. But, like, 100% law enforcement yeah. stops me from doing that. See, like, I, I won't even lie. Like, sometimes I'll steal to this day, but small shit, almost for, like, the thrill of it. Like, have you ever been in, like, a supermarket and just been, like... I'm just going to take this Kit Kat. I'm just going to do it. Like, shit that, like, whenever I steal now, it's shit that I never need. <laughs> it's always the dumbest of fucking dumb stuff. Like, I think the last time that I stole was maybe, like, five years ago. I was in a toy store with my son, and there was just, like, a cool panda. <laughs> like, one of these, like, little micro toys. And I don't know. I'm fucking holding it. I just put it in my pocket. <laughs> I just fucking kept on going. Nah, the, the closest I get to fucking being a rebel anymore is, like, I'll I'll squeeze the blind bag things to figure out which one is, like, the, the one I want. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Buy, like, little things. I just don't do it. You got to do little things. Like, the older that you get, just, you feel like inside you got to keep your edge somehow. And I find myself doing the stupidest fucking shit. I keep my edge by saying things like retard and fucking, I don't know, it's different. Like, there's some, there's, there, there's like, two or three words I won't say on the show. But that I'll say to my friends and stuff, but... This faggot, one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, because I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I'm super oh. ally, like... Oh, but, dude, sad. But whatever, man. I'm sorry that I'm a product of the 80s and I just I don't want to give up my shitty ways, even if they're bad. Oh, like, my, my cousin gets really upset if I say that in front of her and stuff. And it's whatever. I, I try to... I try to just keep it away from people who are going to be worried about it. No. Yeah, but I, I don't apologize for saying retard because you know what? Like, you, cha- you change retard to special, and then people are like, oh, are you sped? Are you sped? Like, they're always uh, going to take whatever the fucking new word is and corrupt 100%. it. So, like, who fucking cares? 100%. I'll never walk up to a fucking dude in a wheelchair looking like a T-Rex and be like, what a retard? <laughs> like, no, but I'll say, like, something's retarded if it fucking makes no sense. That's so much <laughs> worse than saying retarded. <laughs> saying you look like a T-Rex. <laughs> well, when I was in... Uh, Whatever, I'm not going to win any right. friends by talking about this. But <laughs> Yeah, when I was in fucking history class, we were next to the special ed class, it sounded like fucking Jurassic World over there. <laughs> Nothing against anybody. No, it happens. It's an observation. It's a fucking it's observation. Like, yeah. And also the word retarded means to slow down or arrest. Like, and, and so we can't use an English fucking word because some pricks like me like use it. But no. All right, what you got for me, Mike? All right. Have you ever tasted your own cum? Yes. Tell me about it. I don't, you know, I've heard it's good. I didn't. I don't have anything to compare it to. But curiosity, you know, a little bit on the finger. Yeah. It's all good. Sure. I think I got a good flavor. Yeah. Sure. I've done it just being kinky with chicks and shit. Oh, that's how it started, dude. Yeah. I had a girl that fucking like wanted me to eat her out after I fucking blasted <laughs> in her, and yeah. like that's how it started. But you know what I could never do? Is yeah. fucking, I could never snowball. I just I think I'd gag after a while. Some people love snowball. I don't have any feeling towards it, but you know what? If you're fucking into something enough and I like you... There's a good chance yeah. you'll persuade me to get right in there. Yeah, that's a real kinky bitch. She's like a very big fan of cum. Like, she actually... Wanted me to jerk off while she was sleeping and then wake her up by shoving my dick in her mouth. And nice. Blowing. What a girl. Yeah. That's fucking But you awesome. know what? It's a disaster because you do it and then they wake up and they're all turned on as fuck and you're like, well, I'm done. I just came. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm not in, you are not interesting to me. <laughs> what's your turnaround time like? Dude, it used to be good, but it's like fucking... It's not good. Like, I get like a second session in a day and I probably won't even finish Damn, dude, I'm terrified of that. Because I hear that. Like, you have a couple of years on me. Yeah. I'm fucking afraid to get to that place. Because my turnaround has been fucking great. Like, I can come, give me a minute, and then I can get back, get back to yeah, it. Yeah, it's not, not happening. Like, sometimes, like, you know, sometimes I'll get lucky, and, like, 30 minutes later, I'm ready to go again. Sure. But then it's like, a, will I finish? Won't I? Like, yeah. and then, I don't know. Yeah, so. Yeah, we, a uh, we're a decade apart. No. But, I don't know. Whatever. I've never been the best, so I, you probably got a while. Ah, uh, that's good. I could use the extra turnaround for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Right. Now it's like if I, now it's like if I know a girl's coming and I want to have sex with her, like 
I don't want to jerk off for like 24 hours. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know if I can, I have that reserve. Because I jerk off just when I'm bored, you know? When when I'm not, you know, like during the week when uh, Christina's not going to come over, like I'll be off every day. Yeah. But then if she's going to come over, I try to like, as a courtesy, give her like a 24-hour period so sure. it'll be good because I'm older and sometimes my dick just doesn't fucking care. That, honestly, I almost can't even wait to get to that point. Because I'm beating off, like, three or four times a day. Oh, like, shit. If I'm at home, I'm just fucking... Like, I have this really, like, cavalier attitude towards jerking off. Like, it'll be like, ah, I want to watch this. But, like, let's get it... Like, I've said in my own brain, like, let's do a little jerk sesh real quick. Like, I'm very, like, cool about it whenever I jerk off now. Yeah, it's, it's an age thing, and I don't know. I'm, I'm, like, a coxman has never been, like, my fucking greatest quality so uh, I'll sing like songs I'll be like it's time to jerk my dick real quick <laughs> like, <laughs> little getting in there shit also the point like when I beat off like I want to take a nap immediately after too like I can't just beat off and go about my day like I'm beat oh, off man. and it's like nap time I'm totally the beat off and go about my day like I'm I'm the I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do it but let me jerk off real quick. Like, just real quick, just to get it out the way. I'm more like, I'm going to do that, but first I'm going to jerk off, take a two-hour nap, and then wake up and have a coffee and dick around for an hour, and then I'll do it. Nice. Yeah. I get that. It's not nice. It sucks. No, it sounds awesome. It sounds like you have more time in the day. I always have these, like, five minutes, because they're not good jerking off. Like, sometimes you jerk off, and it's good. When your dick is, like, real fucking hard, you're like, all right, I got 20 minutes. It's just me and jerking off. But then, like, the way that I'm jerking off these days, it's just like, let me, like, do this quick sneeze. <laughs> and, like, I'll get on with my shit. You know so much about us now. Yeah, hey, this is why we did this episode. Yeah, we wanted to alienate half of you. Yeah. How long are you guys jerking off? <laughs> yeah. Comment was, down below. Yeah, yeah, what's your time period? Like, I can beat off, I can come in, like, five minutes. Oh, know? yeah, like. You know, I spend most of my time looking for something. Looking for something. Like, I'm sitting there fluffing my dick for 45 minutes <laughs> on page fucking 27 of Big Tits fucking porn out. Yep. Like, and then I find something, and it's like three minutes later. I'm like, why did I waste so much of my yep. day? I get it. Sometimes they just don't have the right look. Sometimes you saw someone really attractive earlier that day. You're trying to, lep like, replicate a face. Doppelbanger. Doppelbangers. You got it. Well. Uh-huh. All right, well... Since we're on the porn subject, like, what's the weirdest, like, porn subcategory or something that you find yourself, like, gravitating to either frequently or time and time again? I mean, it's it's no secret that I have a foot fetish. Like, I, I go to the feet stuff all the time. I'm into that. Um, you know, I fuck both guys and girls. You know that. Some of you guys know that. Now so, you all know it! What up? What up? Yeah, so, like, sometimes I'll jerk off to gay porn. I'll jerk off to, like, trans porn and shit. Um... But I, I don't know if there's any, like, one weird thing that's, like, I'm ashamed <laughs> of jerking off to this. But let me give it a quick thought. Let me, like, run through the fucking catalog of things that I <laughs> type in on my phone. Well, I'll give you some time. I'll, yeah. so I'll talk about my... Uh, it's like a two-parter. Like, I'll find myself either going into, like, home invasion porn. Oh, sure. Or, like... Um, there's one I really like, but there's not a lot to deal with. And, you know, let me know if you know some good stuff. But uh, <laughs> when, when a chick gets stuck. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, uh, I have to fix these wires. Like, it's, What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. It started with um, Jody West in the bathtub. She gets stuck in there. Her wedding ring gets stuck in the drain. And then her, <laughs> her fucking stepson comes in to help her. And, like, <laughs> she won't let him borrow the car. And then he, like oils up her ass and starts banging her. Fuck yeah. And then like try to find that but I'm very specific. Like they have to not be into it at first and then <laughs> get into it as it goes down. Sure. Like because I found one where the stepmom got stuck under the bed like halfway under but she like never came around to it <laughs> and I felt bad afterwards. Like she's like crying. I'm like fuck. That's I know it's not weird. real but like she was a good actress. Sure. Is, you know so it, it has to fit that criteria. And there's a lot of them where, like, they're immediately into it. Like, they're like, well, hurry up and fuck me then, and then we can then get me out of here. Like, that's no good. That's no good. I have to, it has to be the one where they're like, what are you doing? I'm going to tell your dad. They're like, 
two minutes later, they're like, yeah, give me that yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, no, if if that's the route that we're going, then I'd say a weird one that I'm into, it, it kind of toes the same line. But I'm into, like, mom's fucking sons. Like, I oh, I watch all that shit where it's just like, like, do you like fucking your mom, you dirty little boy? Right. I'm just there like, yeah, you fucking it's, mom. It's weird for me because I it's always a stepmom and I don't have a stepmom, so I don't like feel like I'm an Oedipus complex. Right, right. I like the idea of people boning who aren't supposed to be boning, like... Especially if one of them initiates it, the other one is like trepidatious about it. Sure. I guess I don't know. I guess we a lot of women have rape fantasies. I guess we all have like power struggle fantasies <laughs> and shit. And yeah. like, it's kind of like the idea of coming upon a nice ripe ass and a win- and then not getting in trouble for it because they come around like whatever. Wow. You just see the fucking log off, the log off time. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, man. All right, I'm going to ask you kind of a deep question. I really want you to think about it. Oh, shit. All right. When was the first time that you ever hurt somebody or, like, realized that you can, you have the capability to emotionally hurt a person? There's, I don't know if it's, like, me realizing I can emotionally hurt somebody, but the first thing that I feel bad about that I can remember is my mom brought home a Star Wars toy for me, and it was the Rancor Keeper from Return of the Jedi. Sweet. And she did had no reason to. It wasn't a birthday. It was nothing. She just brought me this fucking toy. That's a cool toy to just randomly bring. Yeah, but I opened him up, and I fucking took off his little, like, drapery thing that sure, he had, sure. and he was bald. And I just, I don't know, I just thought that was ugly, like, you stupid bald guy. <laughs> started crying about it, and I'm like... To this day, I have a fondness for the Rancor Keeper because, like, I honor my mother who, like, was sweet enough to bring me a toy. And I just feel terrible that, like, I just a little fat little piece of shit crying <laughs> over the toy. Like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck, it makes uh, me angry. Yeah, uh, no, that's a rough one. That's yeah. a rough one. Hurting your mom like that. Yeah, uh, I hate it. Especially coming out of, like, she did this thing out of it love. Was, yeah, and it was pure. <laughs> I didn't ask for it or nothing. It was purely just, like, she was thinking of me. Yeah, right, right. He likes Star Wars. I this wanna, is Star Wars. We'll go back and just punch the fuck out of that kid, dude. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Um, let's see. The, the most significant time that I ever realized that I could hurt somebody, I, uh... So I had a really significant ex-girlfriend who, she was kind of like my high school sweetheart, and like we, we've been through a lot together and stuff, and uh, I got a girl pregnant at 18, my first son, and uh, having to tell her, and like we were not dating at the time, but there was still all this love between us, and I remember having to tell her like, hey, I got somebody pregnant, and just the way that she cried and like broke down... And she said this thing that I've never fucking forgotten. But, like, she took a break from crying to look at me and just be like, this isn't what I wanted for you. And it just, like, oh, I didn't know that I could do that to you. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking brutality. Yeah, yeah. No, I think about it. I think about it. We're still friends and shit. And, like, you know, we it's, it's a thing that comes in and out. But, like, never forgotten that feeling of, like, oh, shit, this is what it feels like to fucking scorn somebody like to really hurt them wow um, that's, that's something man um would you commit a murder if you could to get away with it no consequences or human life that you would end I talk a lot about like putting a gun in people's mouths and shit like that and just like I say off the cuff stuff but I don't think that I could kill somebody no just cause like that's hard. You're a different person. You're a different human being. And knowing your capabilities is a scary thing. Like, it's it's like getting so angry. Like, getting your angriest. Yeah. You fear that in yourself. Like, you're like, oh shit, I never want to get to that level of anger again. So I imagine it's the same thing with killing. If you kill somebody, you're like, oh shit. If I'm capable of that right there, I don't know what else I'm capable of. <laughs> So no, I don't, I don't think I could kill somebody, nor do I have the desire to kill anybody. I hope people just die. <laughs> I have people like that in my life, but no one that I'm like, I want to deliver that. I want to take your life. 
I, I think I have a bully from like eighth grade that really fucked me up. That if I could just like shoot him, I probably would. And, like to uh, death or just like shoot him? Either. <laughs> no matter. Either. I mean, I'd kneecap him and fucking tell him why I'm doing it. Um, I think I could be an executioner for like super fucking awful people. Like, I, I think I could pull a switch on fucking like rapists and pedophiles sure. and fucking people all day. Like, uh, I think it would probably pay pretty well. <laughs> probably. Yeah, <laughs> there's a uh, there's a if moral. You, if you run a prison in Texas, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> what a specific job offering. Well, that's where they fucking. Yeah, that's care. when they're. That's just where they're doing that's it. That's where they're like shooting yeah. you behind the fucking uh, courthouse and shit. Yeah. Nah, how true, how true. Um, your turn. No, that was my goddamn question. You could kill. Oh, you're right, you're right, sorry. Um, let's see. Let me go light. We just went real dark twice in a <laughs> row. Let me go light. Dude, all we've been is inappropriate and dark. Like, I'm, I'm the three of you that are still here. I'm still <laughs> all right, I'm going to take it back to jerking off. Where's the weirdest place that you felt the compulsion to jerk off? I don't think I've done it too many weird places. I guess doing it at work I used to work at the super sure. eight motel and i would just that would just hook up the fucking porn into a room and go in there and fucking beat my shit sure. and that was nice dude because you're like i beat my shit for 15 minutes like you can like actually figure out how much you're getting paid to jerk off <laughs> that's pretty rad honestly we should get to a place that's so enlightened that like you can go for jerk off breaks like you just be like hey i need to take a bo <laughs> I mean, it might help, you know, when you're really stressed out or whatever yeah. at work. But I've jerked off at almost every job I've ever worked at, so yeah. I get all. Oh, of course, of course, I'm never gonna work at Amoeba again. But like, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> <laughs> definitely at Amoeba. Well, that brings me to one of the questions I had written down. That was gonna be like, give a public sex story that's particularly interesting. I have a few, but a story that I would rather share. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're talking about public sex. So I fucked this girl in a park once. And I fucked her right on the slide. And it was awesome. Rocky, shout outs to you. We only fucked for a summer, but I never forgot you. Like I said, I have a foot fetish issue. She let me suck her toes in a movie theater. Girl, you rock. You're fucking awesome. But... What's not awesome about Rocky is my ex-wife. Rocky and her knew each other. And there was one time at a party that Rocky decided to tell this story about this guy that she fucked in a park. <laughs> it's obviously me. <laughs> and the blowback that I got from my ex-wife for fucking Rocky like four years earlier to me even knowing my wife was some of the worst garbage bullshit I've ever had to deal with. So, Rocky, what the fuck? <laughs> How was it like you were unearthed as the individual? Just because it happened. <laughs> Not even because, like, I, I never told my ex-wife about that story. I never anything. But because Rocky didn't get along with my ex-wife and she had a fucking social platform to, like, kind of shit on her for being like, <laughs> I fucked your husband in a park. Like, it just gave her all of this power and shit. Brutal, Rocky. My ex fucking turned around and gave it right to me. Uh, That's fucking brutal. Uh, but I mean, I fucked in, like, you know, when you're a teenager and you don't have your own place to fuck, you're fucking everywhere. Like, it doesn't matter where you are. And the law won't fucking arrest you. So, like, fucking, you know, the worst thing that could happen is you get caught. So, yeah, I've, I've fucked plenty of places publicly. Well, nowadays, you end up on a sex offender list. Exactly. Like, I don't do it as an adult. I can't even remember the last time that I fucked outside as an adult. Right. Because you don't do it. You have an apartment now. You're not a loser. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I always, like, my parents weren't super, you know, I couldn't, it's like I couldn't bring a girl home and, like, disappear for two hours with her, you know what I mean? So I didn't have, had that many opportunities. But specifically one time, I was like, living in an office building it was like this little building in san diego and it was like mostly like insurance or like there was a limousine service just all these things but the owner was a scumbag fucking slumlord and you know for 500 bucks a month you could like just live in one of the office things like I did. <laughs> and 
I took the girl at the time and I fucked her in the stairwell there. And like to make matters worse, I pulled out and jizzed all over the fucking stairs and left it there. Because I'm classy. I'm classy. You got it. <laughs> classy. I left a fat load on a fucking carpeted stairwell. You can't do that. <laughs> I know. It's awful. So when you go back to that stairwell, do you look? I don't go back there because it's a slum. No, okay. That's fair. Um, let's see. I got a good question for you. I got to think of it. <laughs> so I don't have a good question for you just yet. <laughs> it's I, coming. In theory, I have a good question. <laughs> it might come up eventually. Um, what would you say is the hardest drug you've ever done? You fucking stole from me, dude. Look at that. I was going to bring up drugs. Drugs! Um, I have done most available drugs besides crack and fucking peyote. Um, hardest drug I ever did was heroin, and I died. <laughs> I died. I got revived God knows how much longer later, and I'm just a very surreal experience that brought me religion. But, um, yeah, heroin, it was a speedball, which, you know, if you haven't noticed by the amount of fucking musicians that aren't with us anymore, like, that's an instant. It was the first time I did it, and it the last time I did it. Um, had a neighbor, went over there, and he had some coke, and we were doing it, and, I wasn't a big intravenous drug user, but that night I did. And then, like, he was like, oh, I'm, I'm almost out of Coke, but I got some H left. And, like, he's like, I can mix it. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> Why and not? It felt fucking great. I was chilling. And I'm like, dude, let me see your CDs. I'll put them in alphabetical order. <laughs> and I fucking put, like, all this whole CD collection in alphabetical order. And the next thing I remember, I'm fucking being sucked out of, like, where I was and just waking up to, like, paramedics in my face. Crazy, man. Yeah, and they're like, you know, who gave you the fucking drugs? Like, you, at that moment, when you just got brought back to life, like, there's no sense of lying or telling the truth. I wasn't even turning a dime or nothing. I just, like, was like, he did. <laughs> like, there was nothing to it. Like, uh, But, yeah, he said, you came as close as they come. Crazy, man. Yeah. So, you know, they almost lost me 20 years ago. I'm sure some of you were disappointed. But... <laughs> I'm not. Good. I'm glad that you're here, buddy. But, yeah, I'd say heroin would be the hardest drug I've ever done. But I did a lot of acid in my early 20s, and I fucking love acid. I have zero bad acid fucking stories. Dude, same, same. Acid is my number one favorite drug. If I could just do acid for the rest of my life, <laughs> honestly, I would. Me and my ex-girlfriend did acid pretty consecutively for about two years when we were together. Just on a Thursday, on a day that we weren't working, it's like, all right, let's fucking, we'll trip for fucking two hours. And, dude, it unlocks Two hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Eight, yeah, six yeah. Eight to nine hours. And yeah. Shit. Yeah, um, but acid is the best. Never had a bad story. It unlocks your brain, gets you thinking, gets yeah. you close to the universe. Great conversations, fun oh, stuff. Yeah. I have fucking videos on YouTube of me on acid. And yeah. Shit. Yeah, me and my ex just fucking tripping, playing fucking Mario Galaxy, just having a fucking great time. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm all about it. That's one drug I'll revisit from time to time the rest of my life. Nice. All the other ones, I'm, I'm pretty scared now. Like, Sad. Like, I don't want to do coke. I think I'll just drop dead. Yeah, coke is scary. Fucking, I would say that the worst drug that I ever did, which I know won't be a lot for some people, but I just, I did a lot of it, so now I'm scared of it, is fucking ecstasy. Oh, yeah, it bores yeah. holes in your brain. Yeah, it pokes holes in your brain. And, like, I was just at that age, like, where when ecstasy was really hitting was really popular and like it wasn't just ecstasy at that time it was like you're doing like triple stacks of ecstasy and shit me and my friends we would do like three or four of those in a night and shit so like i did ecstasy straight with me and my buddies for like fucking a year and now like also like drugs change and ecstasy is just a fucking it's the mutt of drugs it's just everything piled mm -hmm. in I know, like, Molly is similar now. A lot of people think, like, it's pure, but it's it's fucking ecstasy 3.0 and shit. Yeah, there is no pure, dude. You have to go yeah. to, like, Columbia in the 80s to fucking get pure drugs. Uh, but I've OD'd three separate times on fucking ecstasy. Yeah? Yep, one time with my friends, and then they just had to fucking, like, call the, co like, call the fucking ambulance on me, and they got me out of there. Another time I was at a club and I OD'd in a fucking bathroom. All on ecstasy. I've only ever had bad things with ecstasy. Well, they mix it with heroin a lot, so yeah. just right back to that. Yeah, it's a mutt. It, they fucking, they'll throw whatever in there. They'll throw, like, rat poison in fucking oh, yeah. ecstasy and shit. Definitely. So, yeah, I'm scared. Like, I, I did some blow, like, 
more recently that I'm happy with a couple of years ago. And I think it set me off on like a fucking anxiety like thing. Dude, that's what happened with me and acid. Like I, the only reason I don't do acid now is because I feel like from doing acid for those two years, it like chemically fucked me up. Now I can't smoke weed. I can't do any drugs. It just I fucks me. I think that's me probably up. more the ecstasy, honestly. You think? I, I mean, but there was like a fucking tender gap between me doing acid and me doing ecstasy. Maybe. So I don't know. Maybe it's latent. Who knows? I don't know. There was a long time where I couldn't do weed, and every once in a while, I'll stop. Like right now, I'm like on very low amounts because of I have anxiety. Mm. I miss weed, man. Like, weed was, like, my fucking down-ass bitch. I grew it for years. I had a business with friends and stuff. Now I can't fuck with it at all. Even last time that we fucking... That was the last time that I tried in, like, a year. Like, and it got me right away. Anxiety. Right. Can't fucking do it. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah. But I really hope in, like, ten years I can pick it back up because weed is fucking fantastic. And you start with something like an indica. Like yeah. a light indica that just relaxes you like doesn't get too cerebral yeah okay well that was my shit so alright I, I want to hear some online dating horror stories dude either bitches that hit you up or like <laughs> you went on one date with them or something cause I mean I got like far too many but fuck the worst is the catfish which I, I feel like I've told you about and then if you you've told me but I don't know if you've told the show so I'll tell you guys, and I, I almost hate telling this story just because it's a joke that I do on stage. Right. But a lot of people that watch my show, don't well, watch our show or my show, don't watch me do stand-up. And it's a, I've made a whole joke about it. But I, I was on Tinder, and I got like a solid eight. Like, I'm real fucking impressed with this swipe and shit. So it's like, oh, sweet. I fucking I got a honeybee, you know? And I invite her over. It's real late. It's like 11 o'clock at night. But we're talking. We're chatting. We live in pretty close proximity of each other. She's like, I don't drive. And I'm like, well, I'll send a lift. (laughs) So I send this girl a fucking lift. They pick her up. She comes to my house. As soon as I open the door, she's like, I know. I look really different without makeup. And it was a totally different chick. Like... No makeup in the world. I don't care how fucking good at makeup you are. It's like if Tom Savini couldn't make that. <laughs> no way! <laughs> no way! This chick was like, I'm, I'm fucking, I know I look different with my makeup, it's not me, da da da. And then I just sit with this girl who's expecting dick, who I just don't give it up. I don't give her any dick. I don't even sit, like, I this how close we're sitting? I did not sit that close to her. Like, you would have to be at the end of this table and I'm at the other end is how fucking far I sat from this chick on the fucking, like, couch. We watched Super Troopers and then we spoke about the government. (laughs) And then, like, after a while, I really tried to fucking drive the point home that I'm not going to fuck her at all. So no matter what she said, I went the exact opposite direction. Trump is an asshole. Really? I love him. He's fucking fantastic. <laughs> I, I hope he fucking runs another 20 years. Like, anything to fucking get this bitch to just fucking leave my house. And she doesn't. Because you have to pay for her to leave, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She doesn't leave until fucking 8 a.m. And fucking no sleep or anything like that. And I'm just like, well, it's time for you to go. I gotta start getting ready for work and shit. But yeah, that is maybe the worst I had another chick who fucking, I took to a rave once, who was just butt ugly. I'm so sorry. I know you follow everything that I do, and you're probably going to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> you were so ugly. Like, I thought, like, maybe in person, <laughs> you were going to be prettier. <laughs> but, oh, my God. Like, we don't talk enough. And, yo, honestly, like, and I have to do this. I'm sorry. But, like... You're such a good person. Like, I fucking, I really dig who you are. You're so smart. And, like, all the stuff that you do, I really support. I just wasn't super attracted to you. You're just fucking ugly. Ugh, I don't even, she's so nice. She's such a, you're such a nice person. I'm not even going to say your name. She's so that, crying, you're a monster. <laughs> I'm not going to say your name so that way maybe there's plausible. <laughs> but, like. Yeah, it's, it's not you. Uh, if you're thinking it's you, it's not you. A drink. It's another girl that went to a rave with Michael and never got fucked. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. All right. I have a lot of fucking online dating stories. Like, girls that showed up, they take special camera angles, they show up fucking looking like they ate another <laughs> human before they got there. A lot of that, but it's not as amazing as... Like, there are areas of San Diego I won't date anymore. Like, you have to be <laughs> real special if you live in Hemet for me to even talk to you. Jeez. And same with fucking Lakeside slash Santee. Like, you're probably white trash. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Probably white trash. Um, but there was this fucking girl in Hemet a, f- a few years ago. I don't know. Not too long. I was in this room, so it had to have been less than three years ago. But started talking to this girl, and she looked cute. And she, you know, her pictures were all right. And it didn't really look like she could fake how she looked. So I was talking to her, and we're getting along. And then, like, at one point, she's like, oh, I, you know, there's something you should know about me. Like, on occasion, when I'm with uh, the right people... I like to do PCP. <laughs> usually when I tell the story... It's not an on occasion thing. Usually when I tell the story, I lie and say she told me after I picked her up. But, like, the sad truth is I decided to believe that, like, you could potentially fucking do PCP, like, once in a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, maybe it's like, you know, chasing the dragon or something. Like, if you don't... You know, if, you, if you're doing it, it's the right stuff. You don't rip your arm off and try to kill a cop. Like, <laughs> I'm like, all right. Eat a fucking face off and shit. So I still fucking went to pick her up one day. Like, a few days later, she wanted to come over at, like, fucking late. It was, like, 1 a.m. I had to go get her in Hemet. And then she was, like, a fucking hour and a half away. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I went and bought some condoms and shit. I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm like, maybe she did this as a case. I'm not doing it with her, but, like, whatever. I pick her up, and, like, holy shit. Like, you just know. It's like she's a fucking... Like, it, she's not currently on it, but you, like, she just the way her speech pattern is, and st- you just there's something fucking wrong with her. She's like an ex-tweaker type of thing. Like, fucking weird. Weird mouth movements and shit. But I, I picked her up. She's in the car, and we're driving away, and she's like... I'm already, like, headed there when I, like, it starts, I'm starting to notice these things. I'm already, like, yeah, driving back home. And and then she starts telling me, like, how she's married to this Native American. No. Girl. But, like, they're not in love. And she, she lives with him two weeks out of the month because he gets his fucking check or whatever. <laughs> it's just fucking wretched. Like, like, everything I'm learning about. And she's just fucking stupid and, like, annoying. And, like, I'm so, like bad with confrontation sometimes sometimes i'll just rip your asshole open but like i just I, it was awkward and i didn't want to fucking like just be like we're turning the fuck around so i'm right, like right. okay i'm gonna drive her to my house and fucking we had plans to go see it like the next day she was supposed to come over sleep and we're gonna get up and we're gonna go see it and go out to dinner and shit and she's a fucking disaster so like i'm just driving home and i I get here and I'm like, oh, she sucks so bad. And <laughs> at some point in the car ride, she bumps some gum off of me and she's like chewing gum. Well, I sat up and watched movies till she was tired and I let her fucking go fall asleep on my bed. And then I went to sleep and I woke up and I was like, I got to get this fucking bitch the fuck out of here. So I like made up an emergency that one of the dogs had to go to the vet and I had to take her home. And, like, we have an appointment for 3 p.m., so I got to fucking take you home. And I, <laughs> I drove her home, and she's, like, just a fucking nut. Like, she thinks it's great. Everything's great. She's like, oh, your birthday's coming up. Like, I'm going to do a strip tease for you. And I'm <sighs> like, oh, yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. Like, I'm never going to see you again, drop bitch. Drop her off at her fucking house. Block her across every piece of – block her on plenty of fish. Block her phone number. Drive home. I get fucking home and I go to my bed and this fucking stupid bitch in her sleep spit up the gum I gave her. And I think it was after I did my sheets or whatever and it like fucking, it just ruined them. It just fucking ruined them, you know what I mean? Garbage. But like the part of the story I always try to avoid is that I actually went to pick her up after I fucked up. (laughs) And she dabbles in fucking (laughs) angel dust. Like, oh, what a disaster. Like there's, there have been a lot of fucked up bitches on social media and... Congratulations on not making the story because that one was the worst. Uh. 
All right, Brad. Hard hitting question time. Hard. Hard hitting question. What happened to you and Killer Flicks? Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. The world wants to know. Uh, yeah, the world has heard a version of the story. They haven't heard mine. Yeah. All right. Here it is. All right. Fuck it. I wouldn't even bring this up, but um, I'll get to it. No, your side. I want. I want the world to know your side. Of the story. I would normally not bring this up, but after a year of being absent from there, the people involved brought it up again in a different incident, and like just put me on blast in front of a whole new fucking group of strangers and shit. And I only found out about because somebody like photo. You know, screenshot it and showed me in it. Which really for those of you who don't know, I actually know Brad from Killer Flicks. Okay. That's like where we met. So this is uh, so this is from be... from my perspective, you were a big deal in Killer Flicks. I like to think so. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about this, because some people are just going to enjoy this because they already know about what happened, and maybe some people like who thought they knew what happened are going to find out, but like. Some of you are just wandering in and you don't fucking know shit about it, so I'll explain. A couple of years ago, I, after like really getting deep into horror, like more so than I even was, like I joined a group on uh, Facebook called Killer Flicks, and like I loved it. Like I I met so many fucking people that are still and cool with, including him. Like it was awesome. It was like I found my fucking people. And I fucking love this group. And all I wanted to do was be a moderator in there. Like, I'm constantly doing stuff for the group. I I met Kane Hodder and Felissa Rose, and I had them give a shout out to the group um, at a horror con. I had I'm wearing my Killer Flick shirt in the one picture I got to take with Robert England. Like it was everything to me. It was my fucking life. And uh, I did get to become a moderator in the group. And then for these, those of you that don't know, that's the person that, like, makes sure people are following the rules. And, you know, it's a step below admin, but you get to, like, you have the power to kick people out. And, you know, we have, there's a mod chat where we go and discuss problem people or just bullshit or whatever. And that, that was part of the thing I was in. And uh, some of them, I don't want to, I have no problem naming names because fuck you, but I don't want to get in trouble. So, like... <laughs> like I, I'm gonna change the names. Uh, the the main person in that group is a big YouTube celebrity, and like his like lieutenant or whatever is another big YouTube celebrity that you may know. He he goes by a name that sounds a lot like Brody Breach, and <laughs> him and some other people Oof. in the group, like one who's a, has initials that rhyme with Bell B B. Um, they they were part of some called like a scream team or some other horse shit. I don't know. They're fairly popular YouTubers. Like whatever, a bunch of pussies if you ask me. But uh, it came a day in Killer Flicks. Well, well, first of all, let me just say that the the mod group was a business group, but it was also a group of friends. And these people didn't really talk in there because they're like they got their YouTube celebrity fucking personalities going where they like. You know, sometimes they'll float down and bless the fucking plebeians with their presence or whatever, but they don't even really talk in the fucking group. So it's mainly me and, like, my friend Rebecca Reinhardt and Andrew Becker and some other people that you may know, and uh, it's a comfortable place. So when a fucking problematic person comes in, does something in the group, like, I have no problem, like, going in there and being like, dude, why the fuck do we let this retard fucking be part of the group or whatever, whatever. this shit heads up to it again, like, whatever. I did it. So one day, this fucking guy, and his name rhymes with Crying, and he's the fucking horror evangelist or whatever the fuck he goes by, some fucking religious zealot nut that likes horror. And he watches Terrifier, and it was his first time watching it, and he, like, made this litany of Curse's uh, review of it in Killer Flicks. He's like, I'm actually ashamed of my fellow horror people for liking this movie. It's such garbage. and Whoa. like, awful. I didn't even know that part. That's and crazy. all this fucking shit. And I, I, like, said something. I'm like, can we not, like, be so negative or whatever? Like, not just... Wait, you, you know? said his name rhymes with Ryan? I don't even know what you're talking about. That's wild. 
Well, he's a fucking stupid asshole. Cares about him. <laughs> old cocksuckers. Better than other people. He's Team Brad. Fuck Jesus. you, bro. Sorry. I don't know you, but fuck you. Fuck him. His name's Brian. I don't give a fuck. Fuck that fuck. Oh, Ryan does rhyme with Brian. It sure does. <laughs> it sure does. Go anyway. Um, so I'm like, I, I don't like when people fucking like come onto a thread and talk shit about something. Like, if I'm talking about Halloween 5 and I like it with my friend, I don't need you coming in and being like, I think it's a piece of fucking garbage. Like, non-constructive bullshit. Well, it was his post, but I didn't like that he was shaming other horror fans for liking it. I fucking love Terror. No. And so uh, I like it wasn't that bad. I was just like you know like maybe, I forget what I said, but it was basically like maybe we shouldn't just talk shit. Right. Let's um, be cool. Let's yeah. not fucking tear down movies that most of us love. Right. Well, I had recently done on the Mike of Madness a fucking review of uh, Death House, which I don't think is a movie that anyone loves. It's an abominable pile of shit. Mm. And uh, our thumbnail was a. Uh, me holding up a razor blade and Rebecca had like a fucking noose around her neck and Jason was like holding a fake gun that I photoshopped in and shout out to the Michael Madness. Yep. And uh I didn't know they would have had a problem with it, but uh this Bell B B whatever the fuck, this stupid bitch. This Brian. No, this girl. Oh, it's a girl. Yes. I don't know her either. Her first initial is L. I know like 10 people in fucking Killer Flicks. Her first I'm initial still... is L, whatever. She's one of the people that was a mod but doesn't ever talk. Doesn't fucking come converse with us little people. Um, she just comes out of nowhere on my thing. It's like, oh, but it's okay to fucking make fun of suicide. And there are people who are fucking... Su Let me tell you something. Everything is jokeable or nothing is. Fuck you. I'm a stand-up comedian, and that is true. I yeah. Can back that it's up. like you can either make fun of everything or you can't make fun of fucking anything. You don't draw the fucking line. And even people that have been suicidal before fucking enjoy my sense of humor. It's mm -hmm. what the fuck ever, dude. I don't feel bad for suicide or abortions or anything that you choose to do. You're not a victim if you choose it. Mm -hmm. All right? You're here. So she had previously got mad at somebody for talking about the movie Black Christmas and how the girl in there has an abortion or whatever. And she okay. just like came in and was like saying, I was like, the abortion is not something to make fun of. Well, she came in and started ranting about what's okay to fucking make fun of suicide, like blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it was like, whatever. I'm like, oh, she's a dumb bitch. But... I didn't fucking say anything. Well, apparently her and Rebecca had got into it a little bit. Oh, no. And who could get into it with Rebecca? I don't know. That's fucking weird. Well, I what I had been told is that she had called Rebecca a cunt. Oh, that's... Well, she's a cunt fucker. <laughs> Team well, Rebecca, what's so up? So, I forget, you know, because I'm not up everybody's asshole, I forget that Bodie Beach and Elle <laughs> are both part of the fucking <laughs> Scream team. And that they're friends. And I have Bodie Beach as my fucking Facebook friend. And I, I like, made a Facebook post that, like, had her initials. It said, Lick Dog Genitals. So, figure it out. <laughs> okay. And then, like, I started thinking about it, and I took it down, like, an hour later. Sure, sure. Just, like, well, there's no reason to be such a dick kind of thing. Well, I didn't know this at the time, but, like, I haven't pieced it together. Bodie Beach... Cody Leach, fuck you. You know what? Report me, you fucking sack of shit. He fucking... Break on through to the other side. Yeah, he won't pay attention to me because I'm nothing. Because he's got 10,000 followers and I have nothing. Well, fuck you. You know what I can do? Grow a full beard. <laughs> what? <laughs> fucking chin strap looking like he needs a fucking helmet. You know, truth be, I don't know who Cody Leach is. I hear the name more Look than him up. I know who he, he is. He comes, he bros out at the beginning of his fucking review, and then he fucking talks about how Freddy's dead sucks and child's play, but not this child's play, and his dad did this. Your dad's a fucking asshole, so are you. I've, I've never seen his channel. I've never, like, I know him only because Okay, well, he was, a, he was a big fucking deal in Killer Flex. I've seen Lee's videos. When he fucking, when he floated down from his pedestal to fucking, like, comment on something, like, all the bros would come in and, like, Cody, you're so great. Interesting. So he's got mad power. I've got all I have is loyalty. I care. I go to fucking cons and get fucking celebrities to fucking say hello to killer flicks and shit. I care about the goddamn group. He just uses it as a platform to fucking advertise his videos. Well, I don't know I, about you, Cody, but this guy watches all the video creep stuff, and I love him for it. So I didn't realize it, but he had gone to Lee and been like, "Brad and Rebecca are bullies." Now this Here. is one hundred percent because he wants to fuck LDG. And 
his wife is a fat cunt who got who got pregnant, had a baby, and never lost the weight. And he's a miserable fucking sack of shit living in Florida. And he wants to fuck the Canadian whore. Well, so he take obviously on her side. I didn't think about it. Well, he went and said, Brad's a fucking bully. And so I wake up one day and Rebecca's left killer flicks. I'm like, what the shit? Well, you know, it turns out that she she sent me some things with Lee. Like, I heard you and Brad are bullies, so I think I'm going to, like, shake up the mods and make, get all new mods, blah, blah, blah. Like, no trial. And so I go into the group, and I I'm, I don't know. I haven't even thought about Cody. I didn't know Cody didn't like me. I liked Cody. I fucking watched all his videos. He's actually the reason I joined Killer Flicks is because he, in one of his videos, he fucking said to go join it. Interesting. Okay. So I joined like, Killer Flicks because of uh, Jason, so Mr. Cinema. Right. Yeah, so I was watching his stuff. I kind of held him it. in a little bit of esteem, and I wasn't really associating it or thinking that he saw my thing. Like, I didn't know why Lee thought we were bullies, so I went in there like, Lee, like, you want to come? I was already going to leave because Rebecca was gone. I was right. like, fuck this. But I was like, Lee, come tell me why I'm a bully. Well, then fucking Cody comes fucking in, and he just unloads, like, three screenshots. One of me saying, let's just get this retard out of here. Right. Which I felt safe saying in the fucking mod chat. I didn't call him a retard in group. Right, right. And then uh, a couple of screenshots of me saying something about LDG that I had removed. And he'd got from my own personal Facebook page. So th- I'm not a bully in group. I uh, Maybe I'm a guilty of fucking being a dick on my own Facebook page. Which I reserve the right to do whatever the fuck I want. Chin strap. Or maybe like in the comfort of group. I need to know what this dude looks like. Go look him up, dude. He looks like a fucking beefy queer. <laughs> no offense to my gay friend. Um, I'm kind of gay, and I don't mind. Yeah. So, so I'm like fucking bamboo. I'm like fucking. Um, What's his name? Cody Leach. Yeah, I'm with two E's. I believe. No, the, the op. Yeah, the opposite of the creature. So an A, L E A C H. Um, so I'm kind of like taken aback. I'm like, wow, this guy I kind of respect like a little bit. Like it's like. Dates me and wants to be out of the group, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't really know what the fuck. Yeah, I've seen this. I didn't, didn't really know what the fuck was going on, and so I'm like, "What?" And like, uh, oh, look at him! He grew more beard, but he got fatter. Huh. Okay. Good. I'm glad you're getting fat, you fuck. <laughs> you grow more beard to cover that fat, you fucking prepubescent shitbag. Team Brad, fuck you, bro. I don't know you. Yeah. So he's only gonna talk about how this movie sucks, by the way. Really? Oh, yeah. well then double fuck you. Yeah. I love Cult of Chucky. Suck a dick. So I'm like taking it back. I'm not really ready to fucking um, to like deal with this. But like meantime, and if you can't tell right now, when I don't like somebody, I don't give a fuck. So I've never felt that from you. When Rebecca had first got in a fight with her, I made a meme. And this about meme, Cody? No, about LDG. No, you've said that a couple times. I'm like, I don't know what it is. So I'm sure there's certain people who are going to be watching this who don't. What is LGD? It's Lindsay something something. It's her initials. Oh, it's it's this bitch who yeah. fucking started shit. Yeah, with Rebecca. Right. And uh, just for the view, just for Rebecca's sake, I made a fucking meme out of her that I. This was like you know the week before. Like friend solidarity. Right. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, I don't know anything about her history, if she's had a fucking abortion or anything, which is why this is the stupidest thing in the world, because everybody's on her side. I made a fucking meme, because she had a picture of her holding her baby, and I, like, superposed a zombie face on the baby, with the title of a movie that exists that's called Life After Abortion. <laughs> okay? I don't know that she's had one. Her current kid is not an abortion. It, it's alive. Fuck, dude. <laughs> so I don't know where the fucking butthurt comes from, but the baby is alive, like... I don't know, but it was just to show Rebecca. But after fucking Cody came in and fucked with me, and all my friends, Ashley, who I was great friends with, all these people who I fucking talked to daily just sat there and watched Cody rip me apart. And then Cody took screenshots of what I said, and this moron fuck must have been trying to send them to either L or Lee, but he actually sent it right back to the group. So I just got a screenshot of the conversation that just happened with the subtitle, fuck him, underneath. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, you sent that to the wrong group, moron? And he's like, no. I'm just, do I have to repeat? Do I have to show you again while you're an asshole? Like, he tried to recover, but he's a fucking cretin. And I don't give a fuck how many subscribers you have. I'll fucking crush you in a chess game, you fucking moron. So... I was upset, and then I just fucking left the group, or I left the fucking chat, and I went into the group, and I just 
posted that picture of LDG and said, fuck you, Cody Leach, and fuck you, LDG, and I posted it. Right, you were, like, backed into a right. corner. Fucking people were starting to hate you right. and shit. You so now, do something. you know, in the, in the... When that happened, she fucking, like, made a big deal out of it. Fucking, like, people hated me. I got a few fucking, like, ma- private messages or whatever. Like, I had seen people that I've interacted with that I care about fucking, like, sucking her dick. I lost Ashley as a friend. Like, she didn't give a shit. Just, I'm gone. Like, she bought me pumpkin head and I sent her a bunch of plushies. Like, that was my friend. She was gone. Um, and it's like... She didn't have an abort. I mean, she may have, like, fucking 10 years. I don't know. Right, I don't knows? know the fucking story, but, like... You didn't do it to be like, nah, nah, you had yeah. an abortion. No, blah, no. Blah, blah. Oh, I took yeah, a fucking yeah. really simple fucking baby zombie doll, and I took its face and put it on her baby's face. Right, like, right. Oh. A real non... Yeah. <laughs> so whatever. Like, I, hate, I left the group. I'm, I left my, the group I loved. I lost friends. Are you telling me right now that you did not get kicked out of no. Killer Flicks? No. Because that is 100% what everybody, or at least I thought. No. And I think that's... Everybody the, thinks I got kicked out of Killer Flicks. I posted that fucking meme, said fuck you to them, and I left the group. People are remembering it wrong. Like, because that's what... The reason I'm bringing this up is because a year later, after I've already made my own group, I've left, I've made peace with it. Um, a year later, Lee and Cody and his little fucking Canadian bitch... Like, get into the schism thing, and fucking, she wants to bring up that Lee never backed her up, and she just posts a photo of me posting the meme, like, the same mm-hmm. screenshot from before, a year ago, with no context, that was a year ago, so I got, like, new people saying what a scumbag I am and right, shit, right. and Lee's coming on saying, fucking, you know, we kicked him out, like, blah, 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 and she's like, you didn't do anything about him. I have no love for Lee, but... He couldn't have done anything about me because I fucking left explosively. Period. And so, like, don't use me in your fucking war against him. But if you want to fucking keep bringing it up, I'm telling the fucking truth. Yes, I'm a bad guy for fucking making that meme. Do I regret it? No. Would I do it again? Yes. Fuck you. Fuck you both. I don't give a shit. All right? You fucking wrong me or somebody I love? Like, I'm not going to fucking come in... Uh, like a two and test the water like you're a poo-poo head and then build my way up no I'm giving you the haymaker I'm just fucking shut it down right away wow. and yeah there's a passionate thing and it's taken a long time and it hasn't been funny and I'm sorry but like needs to be fucking said like I did what I did but I'm not the villain that I've been painted to fucking be you know what I mean I didn't fucking like find a weakness in somebody and exploit it like I don't I was just making fun of the fact that she even like thinks you're a horror fan. If fucking, like, some subjects are too fucking sensitive for you, then go the fuck away. We don't have any room for soft fucking pussy-ass people in the fucking group. Well, I will say that from my perspective, because I was never fucking... Like I said, I'm only cool with, like, fucking ten people. Like, I can name them on right. my fucking fingers. No, I think I think my friends list increased by 60 when I was in Killer Flicks. Like, no, like, I... There's only, like, people in your fucking horror weird group... Are half the people that I'm fucking super cool with, you know? Like, I will say that from my perspective, I thought that it was weird when you got kicked out. And when you did leave, it was weird for me. Because you were one of those people that, like, I don't know how, I don't even know how we became friends. I don't either. But, like, it, there was just something, like, we commented on each other's stuff all the time. And when you left, it felt like, well, the light here is kind of gone. So there you have it, guys. There's the drama. There's the fun there's the us getting nice and drunk for you. Yeah, shit got a little spicy, but you know what? We're here to be honest. And I apologize to anyone that fucking witnessed that and found distaste in anything that was said. It was just me shooting from the heart. Um, that's what the fuck happened. We're all here to be friends together, and, you know, everyone deserves to have their truth. And some stuff went down in Killer Flakes. I personally wasn't a part of it, but I know that it is affecting my buddy Brad here, and I'm glad that we got the time to even fucking open up and talk about it. So I am hope that you guys can enjoy that and see the validity in all of it. If not, you should have listened to the disclaimer. <laughs> all right, so until the next episode, peace, guys.